Monumenta has a wide variety of unique mechanics that can be confusing or overwhelming for new players joining for the first time. This guide aims to break down and explain some of the early game mechanics all new players should know to help their playthrough run more smoothly. This video only goes over what I believe are the essentials in the early game, meaning I may leave some topics out that you might still be curious about. If so, you can review the majority of the mechanics I talk about in this video inside the Nexus, located at the Seer Haven Central Square. Any other questions that you might still have can be answered either in the Monumenta Discord or on the wiki.gg, both linked in the description below. If you aren't already, I highly recommend downloading the Monumenta Texture Pack to give the game an enhanced visual boost for the majority of items, as well as the unofficial Monumenta mod to give a display of custom potion effects and ability icons in-game. Other client-side mods such as Sodium or Entity Culling are also great for performance boosting. If you're wondering whether or not a mod is allowed, the Monumenta Discord clarifies that issue of whether a mod is or isn't allowed in the Rules and Resources channel. The majority of the overworld outside of cities and safe zones are breakable, meaning players can break the surrounding terrain to collect resources. However, the overworld shouldn't be considered an area to place important items or construct permanent structures, as the overworld is reset every week to regenerate from the damage, removing anything that wasn't part of the original map. Throughout the overworld, certain structured areas called POIs, also known as points of interest, are one of the main gameplay focuses. In these areas, players can scavenge their way through the POI in order to find spawners and the occasional loot chest, with higher difficulty POIs granting better loot. A helpful tip is to double right click inside of a chest or inventory to quickly organize the contents for better and faster looting. If enough spawners are broken within a POI, it will be deemed as a conquered POI, giving a chat message for all players within the POI about the conquered status. Conquered POIs will regenerate once all the players leave far enough away from the conquered POI, replacing all the spawners and player-made edits, as well as refilling the chest with loot. Additionally, if you have a quest compass, you'll be able to check the respawn timer of any nearby POI by shift right clicking with your quest compass to check the respawn timer of a POI. The core of Monumenta's combat comes down to the 8 classes that are available to choose from. Each class has its own unique playstyle, with warriors and rogues being melee focused, mages, alchemists, and shamans being magic focused, scouts being ranged focused, and clerics and warlocks being a hybrid between magic and melee. To look at or change classes, you'll need to head over to the academy in Seerhaven and take a right after the entrance or follow these coordinates to make your way over to the class selection area. There is no penalty for switching classes, so exploring different classes is highly recommended. Talking to the Professor NPC will give you an organized GUI of the class options, giving you a brief description of the class's skills and being able to allocate skill points. Additionally, if you want to change the keybind of a certain skill, there is an option in the class selection GUI, where you'll be able to select which skill you want to change the keybind for. Certain classes may also require a correct weapon in order to activate their abilities. Mages require a wand to cast their magic, Alchemists require an alchemical utensil or bag, which can be located in the alchemist class selection room in the academy, and rogues require a sword in the offhand, where although you could use any sword in the offhand, swords that belong in the offhand will have a tooltip saying so, usually granting a stat bonus. The Dungeons of Monumenta are the main gameplay loop of the server, where once a player discovers the dungeon lobby, they'll be able to buy a key from the gatekeeper to start a dungeon instance by talking to the dungeon access bot with a purchase key. When a dungeon instance is created, players will have a total of 3 weeks to finish the instance where any progress they make will be saved, regardless if they log out during the dungeon or leave the dungeon using an exit button or the gatekeeper. Dungeons will usually be split into multiple parts, requiring the player to finish a certain task to access the next area, where at the end, they will be teleported into their own loot room, containing bonus loot chests and a Willow Trophy item for collection. Additionally rewarding the player a skill point if it's their first completion of a mainline wool dungeon. If the player wants to add another player into their own instance, they must make sure that 1. The dungeon is still on its first week of being created, and 2. That the other player does not have their own instance of the dungeon. If either of those conditions are true, then you won't be able to bring the other player in until the next weekly reset. You can bring the other player by bringing them to the respective dungeon's access bot in the dungeon lobby and right clicking the rejoin option, or by using the instant spot located under the Seer Haven teleport hub for any dungeon instance. Dungeons can be abandoned after one week has passed or the weekly reset has already occurred, 
where you can talk to the gatekeeper inside the dungeon starting room to abandon the dungeon, allowing the player to either start or join a new dungeon. The gameplay of Monumenta is very vanilla-esque, but contains new gameplay mechanics that overhaul the original mechanics. Instead of the vanilla armor system, Monumenta introduces a new defensive system, where gear either has an armor or agility value, as well as new enchantments and passives that work either with armor or agility. For the beginning and early game, it's best to stick with having your entire armor set be either armor or agility focused, as the more of a certain defensive stat you stack, the more defensive value you will gain rather than mixing and matching pieces. Later on, pieces of armor may contain stat bonuses that benefit a certain stat. Attack damage and speed bonuses increase melee damage dealt and the attack speed of weapons. Magic damage bonuses increase the damage of magic abilities, and projectile damage and speed increases the damage and speed of projectile weapons. It should be noted that attack speed does not affect the mining speed of pickaxes, and that spell power of wands does not directly increase the magic damage of abilities that aren't part of the mage's skills. If you're ever confused or want to reread a new enchantment, you can go into your advancements and into the handbook tab to find and read about that enchantment. Additionally, if you find or use gear that isn't part of the King's Valley region, you'll suffer major debuffs when using it, making it worse than using the region's respective gear even if it has much better stats. Quests and Monumenta all start at the quest guide NPC that can be found in any major city. Any quests you haven't completed will be marked in red, and the complete ones in green, where you can hover over a quest to see if you need to complete any prerequisites in order to start it. Once you select a quest, you'll follow your quest compass which can be found in any quest compass chest near the quest guide. Be careful as whatever you put inside the quest compass chest will be deleted once you close the chest. Quest compasses will point towards your selected quest and generate a green particle trail that you can follow. With your quest compass, you can left click to refollow the trail or re display your current quest information. Or you could right click to flip through the quest stages or other quests you may have active. If you want to get rid of the green trail from displaying, you can talk to the quest guide NPC to disable it in one of the dialogue options until you decide to return back to the quest line. Any quest items you may have left over can either be saved for collection or thrown out. Sometimes, if you happen to lose a certain quest item during the quest line, you may be able to talk to the NPC part of that quest for a replacement quest item. For the first region of Monumenta, the main currency is experience bottles that can be found within the chest of POIs and dungeons or earned through selling gear and completing quests. Experience bottles are used in a variety of trades with NPCs and can also be traded between players for items if needed. Experience bottles can be compressed into condensed experience, also known as CXP, where it takes 8 experience bottles to create 1 CXP. CXP can also be compressed further into hyper experience, also known as HXP, taking 64 CXP to create 1 HXP. Salt threads are another currency, dropped uncommonly by mobs, and can be used for trading with soul weavers or gatekeepers in any dungeon instance. These traders offer useful items ranging from food and blocks to specialized potions. Player levels can also be thought as another form of currency, where with enough levels, you'll be able to buy a repair anvil from the Forge NPC, where these anvils serve as a portable repair station or can be used to unshattered shattered gear by holding an anvil over a gear piece and right clicking it. It's highly recommended that you don't use experience bottles as a way to gain levels, as breaking spawners in POIs is a much more efficient method. In terms of selling gear, you can convert them into currency either at the Academy in Searhaven or at the Forge at the appropriate selling stations. At these selling stations, you'll be able to turn the gear into XP or CXP, depending on the rarity with the rates shown on screen. Uncommons are also able to be sold on selling stations for 1 CXP per. Rares and artifacts cannot be sold on a selling station, but can be converted into rare fragments on a fragment station located in any dungeon lobby or specific areas in towns. Rare fragments can be turned into potion and gold, an endgame item with a couple uses, or the rare fragments can be used to trade for other rares of the same group, through the rare traders at the respective wool color or the overall trader. It should be known that unique items and tier 0 gear cannot be sold through the selling stations or be turned into fragments. Repairing damage gear can be done at the repair stations located in the forge, costing a certain amount of experience depending on the rarity of that item fully repairing it when done. Repair anvils can also be used to perform the same task, repairing items without the need of a repair station.
The NPCs of Monumenta offer useful information and quality of life mechanics for the early game player. The City Guide in Searhaven Central Square is able to guide players to important locations in Searhaven, where a blue particle trail will lead the player to their desired destination. Additionally, you can ask the City Guide for spare gear once per death cycle. Although the gear might be kind of bad, it may be enough for players to get back on their feet if they're lacking the supplies to do so. The Orion NPC in the Searhaven Teleport Hub serves as a more compact teleport option, allowing a faster method of teleporting between the major shards, but not regional cities. Overworld instances are the floating respawn anchors located near major teleport areas, where they're used to switch between the shards of the region. If you want to figure out which shard you're in, you can press tab and look at the left of your username to figure out which shard you're in currently. The apartment manager NPC offers the player three ender chest expansions once per playthrough, where these expansions act as shulker boxes when used inside the ender chest, but cannot be opened or placed outside of one. The plot planner NPC located inside the Searhaven castle can offer the player a plot key, at the cost of 64 CXP and completion of the Mage's Legacy quest, where after traveling to the plot's boat west of Searhaven, gain access to both the plot shard and their own private player plot to store items and build their own base. Pullmaster Tenenbaum, located opposite of the teleport hub, offers the player their voting rewards in the form of compressed currency of their preferred region. The Shady Trader NPC located behind the buildings of Searhaven City offers the player passage to the Black Market. That serves as a place where players can repurchase their uniques they have obtained through the playthrough should they need a replacement. Dying in Monumenta is different from the vanilla game, where instead of dropping all your items, a grave will be spawned at the location of your death. After dying, any items with a tier or rarity that were worn or in your hotbar will be applied to level of shatter. Shatter will act as a passive debuff whenever you have a shattered item equipped causing slowness, less damage dealt, slower mining speeds, and more damage taken. Reaching your grave without dying again will remove one level of shatter on the gear you had equipped during the previous death. If you manage to die again without reaching your grave, it will cause the gear to gain an additional level of shatter, increasing the severity of the debuffs, with a max level of shatter being level 3. Dying in lava will cause the shatter level to increase to 2 instead of 1, and falling in void will increase the shatter level to 3 instantly. In order to remove additional levels of shatter, a repair anvil can be used, where it will remove a single level of shatter on any shattered gear. Quest compasses can be used to locate graves, where it will point in the general direction of the grave. Or, if another player punches the grave, it will give the coordinates of the grave to the original owner in the chat. Monumenta has a variety of chat channels and commands that the player can use to interact with other players. Global chat is the default chat, where players across any shards can see those messages in that chat, using slash g to join or leave it. Local chat and world chat are only channels that players on the same shard can read. You can use slash l or slash wc in order to join these channels. The trade request channel is used for the selling and buying of items, joined by using slash tr. The looking for group channel or lfg can be used for players to find other people to do group content with. Moderator help or slash mh is a channel used for players with issues that they can't solve, such as bugs during quests or dungeons and shouldn't be used to ask general questions about the game. Pause chat is a great command for players who want to stop receiving messages from all channels by typing slash pause chat and unpausing the chat by typing the same command again. The last couple of things I want to go over are just a couple few tips that you might find useful that don't really fit too well into the other categories. Opposite the teleport hub across the academy lies the intra Haven TP hub, where it will send players to the furthest point of Seer Haven in each cardinal direction making traversal into the wilderness much faster. For the early game, having one or two extra sets of backup gear is extremely helpful, as I believe it's better to continually cycle through gear rather than repairing or enchattering the same set of gear over and over again, and use the levels on repair anvils. Additionally, shattered gear can also be sold at selling stations for the same price as unshattered gear. If you happen to keep your shattered gear, you can sell these again for extra money. The Royal Spellbinder NPC near the entrance of the academy offers the player two items that can be useful once they get a little further into the game. The Appropriation Rune can be used as a one-way TP back to Searhaven when used in the overworld, making it useful for exploration, although it will not work if the player is on low HP. Shulker boxes are also sold at the Spellbinders, but require Royal Crystals along with two Hyper Experience. Bounties require the player to pick and conquer the selected POI. Or talking to the Herald after will give the player a bounty chest, always containing one royal crystal 
an assorted gear and experience bottles. The trinket bag sold by the NPC near their patron shrine holds the majority of utility and quality of life items inside a GUI. Although it may seem empty in the beginning, it will continually grow more useful the further you are in your playthrough. If you want to check the overall stats of a person's gear, you can type slash PS followed by their username, displaying the gear on the right side with your own gear on the left, along with the stats of the gear such as its defensive values and offensive bonuses inside the GUI. Slash pen will give the player a PEB, a personalized book that allows the player to edit or change important settings, such as ability particle size, dungeon abandoning, pickup options, and much more. For players who don't want to pick up random or junk items, using slash PU will filter out the uninteresting items they can and can't pick up naturally. If you still have questions, the Monument to Discord, Wiki, and Nexus are still great options to answer your own questions. If you want to see more guides on any other topics in Monumenta, leave them below in the comments below, and I'll get around to it if I can. Other than that, that's going to be the end of the video. Bye!